Well, good evening and welcome to The Most Excellent Way. My name is Warren Lund and I'm here with Caleb. We are both leaders uh, at The Most Excellent Group. Um, and tonight we're going to lead you through the, the work of the paperwork and, and just allow the Lord to lead here as we get through this. So, if you this is your first time, we want to say welcome to you, and we have a little gift for you. Um, when we get to those, we'll mention that to you, but ultimately, we want to welcome you, and for those that have been coming, welcome back, um, and for everybody out there, if, if this is your first time, we are a victory group, not a, a recovery group, and we know that we're not ditching on them or anything, but they have their purpose. But we truly believe that when Christ sets you free, you're free indeed. And so we will talk about that a little more. Um, but right now I'm going to uh, ask Caleb to come up here and explain to you why it's a safe place to come on a Monday night or a Tuesday night. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Caleb Domar. Um, I'm on staff here at the Most Excellent Way with Salem Heights Church, and we just want to talk about why it's a safe group. Um, there's a couple main reasons why this is a safe place to come, and, and the first one is that we're always going to get in God's Word. Um, if this isn't man's opinion that's uh, leading this group, it, it's the Word of God, and that uh, that right there should to bring you comfort because God has his best for us and uh, and I personally can get things mixed up and twisted and uh, when I go back to the word of God he lays it out uh, clear and plain of what his expectations are of us and he gives us instructions on on how to live the most excellent way so that's why we always stay in God's word uh, the second is that everybody on staff gets it we all come from addiction um, We've all been through it, and uh, and we can relate to what you're going through. The third reason this is a safe group is that we got a lot of people praying for us. Uh, there's emails that go out every week about the most excellent way, Facebook posts, this different uh, social media avenues, and um, you have a whole lot of people in this church, uh, in this city, in this nation, around the world, uh, praying for us. And the fourth and final reason that we would go over every single week of why this is a safe group is that um, what's said here stays here. Um, nobody's going to go around talking about your personal business. Um, obviously, this is on social media with uh, COVID, so if you type something on there, everybody can read it. We don't have control of that. But um, if you send us a personal message or if you have some of the guys' phone numbers here and you want to shoot us a text or, or give us a call, um, we're not going to discuss what we're talking about with with a bunch of people from from outside this group so um, those are the reasons why it's a safe group and uh, we're, we're glad you're here and to turn it back over to Warren now we'll take you every Monday or Tuesday we get into um, the most excellent way the uh, Beatitudes, the Attitudes of Victorious Living. I'll go ahead and start it, but before we do, at the very top of the page it says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Isn't that what we want? A new way of thinking? A new mind? We can only receive that from Christ. So the first one tonight is humility. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.3 I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Number two, repentance. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus can and will create in me a new way of life. Number three, submissive. Jesus said, blessed are are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. And number four is honesty. Jesus said, 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. I honestly examine myself in the light of God's word. Number five, merciful. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. I'm going to have Caleb come up and read the next five, and then we'll be back. All right, number six is obedient. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. 7. Reconciliation. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I've hurt and dealt with unfairly. 8. Faith. Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.10 I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. 9. Perseverance Jesus said, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5, 11, and 12. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. 10. Loving Servant. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. Thank you, Caleb. On Monday nights and Tuesday nights when we're meeting in a group, we usually ask, uh, what stands out to you for 30 minutes or less, or 30 seconds or less um, in those and how they have and how it's impacting you. Um, of course, we can't, but take a moment in your spare time and look through these and see how they do impact your life. Um, I know that we pass these out every Monday and Tuesday. They're free for the taking um, so that you can look at them throughout the week, just like our um, Lesson tonight is Loving Servant, and it's put on a hard copy of paper so you can take it with you. But we also give out Bibles, so if you need a Bible, just let us know, and we'll get you a Bible, because it's important that if you get into God's Word, we say it every, every week, if you get into this book, it'll change your life forever. We are miracles. This, this whole group is a group of miracles that God has changed lives our lives to glorify him now instead of ourselves or uh, other addictions so on the back of this we go to another verse it's very important Matthew 6 33 and it says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you see we first must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness all the things that we just read will be added to us. But we, we must keep our eyes on Christ. We must fix our eyes. Hebrews says to fix your eyes on Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. It's key to us and our walk with the Lord. And as we get into it, you'll see the importance of that. Um, but now we go to Titus 3, 3 through 8. This is kind of our, our verse for the most excellent way. But it's important because it, we'll go ahead and read it. It says, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, he saved us. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing and regeneration, new birth, and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we shall become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to all men. And at this time, we would ask the group, um, 30 seconds or less because of time frame, uh, what stood out to you? How does this impact you? And there again, I ask you tonight, if you have a copy of this, work through it. To me, um, there was a few things that stood out to me, but the biggest thing is we receive the Holy Spirit. He pours it out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. We cannot do any of this on our own. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit working through us that we, Caleb and I, or any of the others can even sit before you and say, this is what the Word of God says. See, it's not what we think, but what the Word of God says. It's what matters. <clears throat> We also put out a challenge every week that if you can memorize Titus 3, 3 through, 3, 3 through 8, and you can quote it to one of us leaders, any one of us, you don't have to be word perfect, but you got to be close, that we have people in our church that supply $25 gift certificates um, to the little roadhouse, and is it still going to anywhere? Yeah. Anywhere of your liking. Anywhere of your choosing or you're choosing for $25. So if you want to get a grocery cart full of groceries, they'll do it. But we challenge you, you know, what's what's the importance of memorizing scripture? Caleb? Yeah. So like Warren was kind of talking about, um, the whole point as we just kind of read through the, the 10 attitudes of victorious <clears throat> living, um, and then, you know, our, our theme verse, the Titus 3, 3 through 8 on the back, the, the whole reason we, we um, base this victory group on God's word is because it's, it's the way that he speaks to us. And as, as we talk about um, putting on the whole armor of a God, um, you know, the word of God is the sword, which is the only offensive weapon. So as you're going through, as I'm going through my day and I encounter a, uh, trials of various kinds um, it's it's the word of God that I have hidden away in my heart that I can go to that I can use um, to defend myself against uh, these temptations and, uh, and and that's this is what God has given us to to understand him and we can communicate with God in prayer but he's communicating uh, to us through his written word so uh, Salem Heights is really committed as a church to just uh, having us be in the Word of God and and read the Word of God, but also to know the Word of God and to be able to store it away in our hearts and, and have it there. So the reason behind us offering a, a gift card is it, it's an incentive to to kind of entice people to, to, to take us up on it. But we find that uh, once people start memorizing Scripture, not only do they notice a huge difference in their lives, but they realize it's not as hard as they thought it was. And so this is kind of like a primer to get them going. But um, yeah, we'd love to be able to give you a, a $25 gift card if you uh, if you are able to recite the, the Titus passage. Um, you can hit any of us up if, uh, if, if that's something you want to do. But we'd love to have that passage hidden away in your hearts. So that's why we do it. Well... We left a little early. We're going to celebrate some time now. I mean, we since we're not in a big group, we uh, can't pass them out. But if you are a newcomer with us tonight, first time even on the video, um, we would give you a little token of our love. And on the back of it, it says, Welcome, we love you because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. And that's part of what we're going to talk about tonight is God's love and how it affects us as Christians and even unbelievers. 
but ultimately, um, we want to say welcome and that we see you and we do love you and you matter to each and every one of us. So welcome if this is your first time and if then we will have Caleb come back up here and he'll uh, kind of talk to, through pretty quick about the rest of the tokens and then we'll talk about the victories as well as what we're thankful for. So Caleb. All right, I need my exercise, so this is That's good. Right. This is good. Okay, so, yeah, Warren kind of talked about, we have the different tokens. Um, you know, he held one up there. I don't know if you guys can, can read that. I'm trying here. But um, basically, each one has uh, scripture on it, and then it just, uh, it they're all different colors, but it's coordinating uh, different milestones of recovery. So... We have 30, 60, 90 days, six months, nine months, one year, uh, 18 months, and then multiples of years. Um, the gold one is is the one year token. Uh, we have a joke, you know, we can take a Sharpie and write, you know, times however many years, years you have. Um, but the reason for doing this is this piece of plastic isn't gonna, there's nothing mystical about it. It's, it's not gonna keep you, uh, keep you clean or sober. Um, it's it's not going to help you on its own, but um, we know what a challenge it is uh, coming coming through addiction for with all the staff. That's uh, you know it's tough. So it's nice to be able to celebrate and uh, and look back and reflect on what God has brought us through. So if any of you guys have a milestone that you've celebrated this week, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to reach out to us through Facebook or text us, um, we will get you one of these tokens. So that's the goal. We'll put it in your hand. Um, we will find a way to get it to you, but uh, we're really excited and encouraged every time somebody has uh, a milestone of victory. And uh, it's just it's just an amazing thing to see and, and celebrate what, what God's done in our lives. So um, yeah, I was just able to celebrate a milestone um, uh, 11 years the other day. So you know, I'm thankful for that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really overwhelming to think about where, what God's done and where he's brought me from. So I wouldn't be doing any of this, uh, if it wasn't for him. So I'm just glad that he lets me, uh, be here with you guys tonight. And, um, we just want to make sure that if anybody has a milestone that, uh, they feel celebrated as well. So that's why we do it. Then after we uh, get through that, we uh, we ask one big question, and that's, "What are you thankful for?" You know, we're all thankful for some to someone. Uh, for me, I'm just thankful that the Lord has given me the ability to grow in my spiritual walk to a point where I can even come before you tonight and do what we're doing here. Because without Christ, I couldn't do it. Matter of fact, with, without Christ, I wouldn't do it. I I was an introvert. I wanted to be left alone, and I liked it that way. And it's amazing when you allow the Lord to do a work in your life, how far you will go. Uh, Caleb and I were just talking about being asked to do this. We'd never say no. And to me, we'd never say no to God either. If the opportunity uh, is put in front of us to share Christ, we would do it in a heartbeat because that's what it's about. And as we went through those 10 Victoria, or the 10 um, attitudes of victorious living, we come to loving servant. And we're gonna talk about that tonight, but as we do our celebrations, we also get to know each other. And during that time, we would go around the circle and you would introduce yourself. Um, and just give a little bit about what brought you here. I came here in 2014 um, with my wife ready to leave me because I had too many self-centered uh, problems within myself and I was driving her away. I was bitter, I was, I was hurt by religion and to keep it short, she told me if I didn't get help, that she would never come home. And so I figured 
seeking out spiritual help would be better than anything else. So I came here and it was pretty quick and pretty evident that I needed Christ to do some changing in my own life. And so that's what brought me here. Um, Caleb's going to come up and share in a minute and he'll hit a little bit on that. But as we do that, we go around and we, we want people to know that we see you and that you matter to each and every one of us. And what matters more is the importance of knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. As we get into our lesson, the attitude of victorious living is loving servant. And what we're going to talk about tonight, we can't even pull off without knowing Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm not against begging you. Matter of fact, I beg you, before you shut the computer down, before you leave this site, whatever it is that's got you here, whatever reason brought you here, I, I beg you to surrender your life to Christ. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. Um, because as a new creation in Christ, the loving servant says, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. Jesus was very clear when he said, or John was very clear when he says, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's all about eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? There's only one of two places, and the Bible is clear about that. So I challenge you tonight to please, even if you don't know what to say, pour your heart out to Christ. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. Ask Him to be the Lord of your life and to come into your life and, and guide you from that point on. Because, see, the Spirit of God is then given to you and that is what gives us the ability to pull off being a loving servant. I love to say bond servant because, and people here have heard me say it before, the difference between a bond servant and a slave, a slave is forced to do what the master wants. But a bond servant or a loving servant lays his whole life down and says, I'm here for what you want me to do because you are my master. And we can only do that because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us. So if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he was raised three days later and he did that for you and for me, and if you ask him, he'll be the Lord of your life. If you believe that, you are saved. And now comes the change. It don't happen overnight either. Matter of fact, it takes time. But you just keep perse persevering and keep going to the Word of God daily. You live on this. You eat this. You digest it. You wear these out. We'll give you a new one. Because this is the most important part of it, is living out God's Word. So let's get into it. The attitude of victorious living, loving servant. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You're called, you choose. And you got to commit, and you will change. You will change, excuse me. And it says, faith in God's promises produces power. Do you believe it? As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. Part of being plugged in, part of being a Christian is then being discipled you know I didn't just ask Jesus in my heart and poof we're walking around holy and without blame it takes a process to call it sanctification even the disciples we were talking about it today in our leadership class walked with the, our Savior three years with the the sinless Savior the one that laid down his life for you and I there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. This is not something that we pull off by ourselves. It's supernatural. We can't pull it off on our own. We need the Spirit of God to work in us and through us. Each and every day, each and every moment of the day, 
That's what tells us if we're right, if our compass is right, or if it's not, being in the Word of God and the Spirit of God doing a mighty work in us. So let's look at 1 John 4, 10 and 11. It says, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if you love so beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now, Pastor Matt said it, a few other guys have said it. When we became a Christian, they used a lot of different terminologies here. One of them is this word propitiation. That means full payment. He died on the cross in 33 AD for sins past the present and future if that's not the case then we would have no hope at all but he did that for us so and even the sin that we will commit because first John says if you say that you're without sin you call God a liar so unfortunately we do find ourselves in sin but what do we do with it when we do that we run to the throne of grace where we find the grace that we need, the mercy that we find that only God will give us and the forgiveness. So, at this point we would ask, what stood out to you in this verse? For me, there's a lot of different things, but you know, when it comes to the, the subject of love, when I was in my addiction, I only thought about me. Love was not even on the Richter scale at that point. I was hurt by what I thought was love, and I didn't want it. I didn't even love myself. Can you relate to that? But when Christ showed up and showed me his love, for me, through his word, it changed everything. Through his son, Jesus Christ, when I see that, when I grabbed hold of that and saw what he did for me, it changed my world. That happened in about 1991. But I also have to say that being in the Word changed my whole life because it changed my whole view. It changed every, everything that I weighed in life. I weighed with the Word of God. My attitude, my life, the way I reacted to people, the way people reacted to me, how am I supposed to react to them? See, you can't do that by mustering up your own love. It's a spirit-filled love that only comes from our Savior. So, 1 John 3, 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongues, but with action and truth. You know, I love this scripture because it says here that love is an action word. There's, we got to do something other than just say I love you. You know, I've always said that I love you and I'm sorry are the two uh, most worked over statements in life because they're so easily said but with no meaning but here love is an action word there is meaning behind this there's meaning behind and this is love in the first one not that we love god that he loved us so see he had an action behind his love and we have an action as well behind ours but remember this cannot be done if you do not know christ Oh, you can fake it for a little while, but it will truly show you when it comes to the action. So, and, and you know, I was talking earlier that love is the catalyst of, or glue that keeps us in the Father's will because if He didn't care or love us first, we couldn't love others like He loves us. Love holds all things together, and we can't forget that. It helps us to see people for who they really are. People have hurt me, and I'm sure people have hurt you. And you, we both hurt people. But see, when you truly have God's love in you, that's no longer the case. You, you learn to forgive and love them as Christ loved them. So I'm going to have Caleb come up and read this next section. And the question I have for Caleb is, so he doesn't have to keep getting out of his seat, is how did this this subject of love impact him when he got out of prison? And he'll speak on that here momentarily. Uh, thanks, Will. Perfect. All right. 
All right, so here the next passage we have is uh, on the front of the card is 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have all the faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And uh, that's pretty encouraging, especially, um, you know, coming from somebody who lived in a life of addiction. Um, I had kind of a skewed view of love. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't love myself for sure. Um, my, the love I experienced, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't patient, it wasn't kind. Um, you know, it was the exact opposite of all that. So it's just really encouraging to come back now and be able to read this and know that um, God has put uh, love as one of the most important things for us as believers to show to other believers and to people that, uh, that don't know him. And Pastor Matt had asked me to uh, give a quick five minute um, just testimony on a uh, loving servant and what that meant to me. Um, specifically to have people you know not give up on me um, and I think back to running amok um, in high school uh, if you haven't heard my testimony there's another video you can go back and find it um, I won't go through the whole thing but uh, I grew up going to this church um, I uh, believed in God I knew that he loved me that he created the world but uh, I wanted to do my own thing that led me down a dark path um, ended up getting really heavily involved in drugs and alcohol, went to prison, uh, got out, um, started using uh, harder drugs, um, needles, um, hanging out with worse people. Uh, it, it got really bad really fast. And the whole time I knew that God loved me and I knew that he cared for me. I had mixed feelings about the church, um, about people in the church. Um, but the whole time throughout my life, uh, I knew that there was definitely certain people that absolutely wanted the best for me, cared for me, and and didn't judge me, but loved me. And uh, I can think back um, to like Matt, Pastor Matt McCollin. I don't know if he was a pastor in that capacity at the time. He might have just been a guy that just worked for Figaro's that had a heart for God, but. Um, him and Scott, I think he was he was an elder in the church, he must have been, but him and Scott Hunter, uh, they came to my place of employment and gave me a letter, it was a church discipline letter, and basically said, you know, we love you, the way you're living is uh, unacceptable, it's damaging to the rest of the congregation, uh, until you address these things, we're not going to, you know, allow you to, to come back, so um, love isn't always... Uh, bending over backwards for somebody or letting them, you know, use you as a doormat. But uh, there, there's wisdom in love. And uh, there's there's was a lot of godly men um, and women at the church that uh, prayed for me throughout the time when I was off running amok. And to me, that's what I think of when I think of a loving servant as somebody that uh, the unconditionally is is uh, praying and hoping and rooting for God's best in another person's life, even if that person isn't ready uh, to make a change. They might not even be safe to be around. Um, it's not like you have to invite them over to your home, but just a loving servant to me in that capacity was having people 
that were there praying for you, rooting for you, um, and maybe doing things behind the scenes, doing things for me behind the scenes that I didn't even realize. But there's a whole bunch of people. I already named uh, you know Pastor Matt and uh, Scott Hunter. I think back to like my old D team leaders like uh, Russ Kittrell and Russ Clawson and um, my parents, um, DJ and Kelly. Um, you know, uh, Steve and Linda Kelly, just a lot of people that have been around for a long time that I knew growing up that uh, I know they were praying for me and they were, uh, you know, wanting to see my life turn around. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what that would look like at the time, but here we are, we can fast forward a decade later and we can see all the, the blessings that have come out of that. And there's a lot of people, I mean, that's a story for pretty much everybody on staff is, uh, you know, we were all lost at one point. We had people who were rooting for us, who uh, never gave up on us. Um, the whole time God's pursuing us. And it's just, when were we ready to make the decision, ready to make the commitment to uh, to hand our lives over to him? So this is kind of um, just an overarching way of looking back on all the loving servants in the time when I was running amok who were uh, trusting God and saying, not saying, how can I solve this or how can I fix it, but how can I trust you, God, to take care of it for me because this is a bad situation. It doesn't seem like it's going to get better. So um, to me, that's what a loving servant is, a blonde servant, is someone who's looking at a situation saying, God, flow through me to do this work that I'm incapable of doing without you. So I just wanted to touch on that, and uh, Warren will come up, and we'll get into the, the John passage. You made some very good points there. If we were in group, we would ask you then again, how what stood out to you in this passage? And for me, you know, the, the world teaches us to disregard people that's hurt us, that we push them aside, that they're no longer lovable, that um, they've hurt us and we should cast them away. One thing growing up as a kid in the church with this scripture, if you took the, the word love and put Christ in there, you would see that none of this is possible without first knowing that Christ loves us and this is who Christ is. But as Pastor Matt was talking in leadership class, he learned to do it by putting your name in there. I challenge you to read it both ways. Put Christ in there. See how it reads for you. See who Christ is. But then the challenge is put your name in there and see how you measure up. Because, see, this is a litmus test for us. And as we turn the paper over, we're going to see even more of a litmus test. We cannot do this on our own, folks. There is no way that we can pull this off. But the thing that we need to do is we need to continually go to the throne of grace and say, Lord, let this kind of love flow through us. Let the Spirit of God produce this love in us so that we can love others the way Christ, the way God loved us. See, it's important that we get that straight. This should be a lifestyle for us. And every Christian that has ever asked Christ into their life should desire this same thing. And I really believe as we grow, because we all grow at different speeds, at different levels, we come to the realization that this is what God wants for us, just to love this way. Um, <clears throat> so let's flip our card over, and we'll look at the next pieces of Scripture. Uh, John 13, 34 and 35. It says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. For me, how can we love others if we don't love God first? Matthew 22, 37 through 39 tells us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then to love others as ourselves. 
read it. I challenge you to go and read the chapter, Matthew 22, 37 through 39. There again, if you don't have a Bible, we'll give you one. But see, it's important that we understand this is how people will know that we are Christians, by our love. It's not a love that we, like I said before, that we pull off on our own, but it's God's love flowing through us. One of our quotes here says, Love and the oneness with God is shown is the mark Christ gives Christians to wear before the world. Only with this mark may the world know that Christians are indeed Christians and that Jesus was sent by the Father. See, to even do this, we've got to first believe, like I said, this is some wise statement from a, a godly man. But he saw the importance of what love is and how it applies to us. We must continue to seek God's uh, will in this so that we can love the right way. Our eyes should be up, not outward. We should love first, love our God with everything that we are. If you go back to that Matthew statement, what did he leave out? He left out nothing. We are to love him with our full being. That's why we are bond servants owned by Jesus Christ. Loving servants owned by Jesus Christ. Because it's not my will, but thy will be done. So I have a few questions here. And you know, you can, you can put it up on the board if you'd like, or you can text us, but we'd like to hear what they, what they mean to you. What do you think about this statement? Action drives feelings. For me, it didn't matter how I feel. My love for Christ and to do His will trumps feelings every time, or it should. Feelings are real emotions. I will not deny that. But they should never take the place of obeying God, love one another, and showing love. What you are doing drives your feelings. See, we are to live out love. One of the things that come to mind every time we speak of love is the story of the Good Samaritan. I believe it's in Luke, where the men of God supposedly that were in the temple walked right past a man that was beaten and robbed and stripped and yet the Samaritan comes along and shows love to me that is that speaks loudly of God's love and not our own because see that man even he used his own donkey to transport the man and he used his own money to put him up in the motel to get him back to good health. And even said if it ran over what he had already paid, that when he came back, he'd settle the bill. See, it, true love, it takes from our own and gives to others in many ways. So the second question we have for you, well, let me see. Why would love Why would love be essential to our victory over self-centered behavior? I'm going to ask Caleb to answer that a little bit. I have my own words, but let's see what Caleb has for that as well. Caleb? We are right there. Perfect. Yeah, so why would love be essential to our victory over self-centered behavior? Um, I think for me, uh, it's a, it's a way to get outside myself and, um, and the desires that I have because, uh, in addiction, um, I didn't have a thought or care about anybody else outside of myself. And so, um, to act with love, kind of like the passage that we just read from, from Corinthians, um, you know, he's talking about if he gives all his possessions to feed the full, the poor and surrenders his body to be burned, but does not have love, it profits him nothing. 
And then he goes to talk about love is patient, love is kind. So, I mean, love is like the essential staple. Like, it's the main thing that I need to have in my life if I'm going to love God, love my wife, love my family. Um, and, and that's a, a great way to get out of a self-centered behavior is to go out of your way and do something loving for someone else. Serving is a big way of going out of your way to help somebody else. Um, it's it's big in in my um, recovery, if you or in my victory. I like that. Um, walking in victory, the first thing I wanted to do was help other people, and I desire to help people even today, but not because I can, but because. God desires that we love people in such a way that we can help them along, that we can walk alongside other brothers, that we can come alongside people that are hurting and show love. You know, it's not until we understand the love that was shown to us from God through Christ that we can truly understand how we are to love others unconditionally. It's no longer about us. It's about living out Christ daily till he his until he returns if you are loving right it will be can't read my own writing evident in your life you'll see the love of Christ in it and it's a litmus test go back to 1 Corinthians 13 I love this but put your name in there. See how you measure up. It's a litmus test. Am I doing this? When we say a litmus test, remember in school you used to dip that little tab into the bottle and it would tell you what chemicals were in it? Well, here we're dipping the word, we're dipping our lives into the word of God to see how we measure up. Are we loving? Are we forbearing one another? Are we are we maybe give them an example? Good idea. I'll give you an example. Warren is patient. Warren is kind and is not jealous. Warren does not brag and is not arrogant. Warren does not act unbecoming. See, as you put your name in there, it puts you right on the front line of how do I measure up. For me, I would love to say I live this out every day, all day, but I fall short without the glory of God. And what do we do? That, What do we do when we fall short? Do we say, oh, I messed up. I can't reach this. No. See, when we put our trust in Christ, when we surrender our life, our will to God, it gives us open access to the throne of grace. We can run to the throne of God and say, Father, forgive me. I'm not living the life that you desire of me. Help me to live out love like this, like your word says. See, that's the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, is you're never alone. That he is always with you, he will never leave you. Yes, we can pull away from God, but he will never leave you. He never left, he's still there, just waiting for his children. Matter of fact, 1 John 1, 9 says, My little children, I'm writing to you these things so that you may not sin. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Think about it. We have an advocate with the Father. The one that paid the full payment for us. Read it, 1 John 1, 9 to 2, 2. You'll see love played out through our Savior, Jesus Christ, to the Father. So learning to love requires a daily repentance or a daily dependence upon Jesus while at the same time focusing on dying to self and living for Him. Living in this manner allows us to love others in spite of our adverse circumstances or unloving feelings. Love is a choice. We choose to love. But first, before we can even love, we've got to ask the Lord to flow through me 
to love the way that He wants us to love. We choose to love others no matter what has happened in our life, but we can be smart about it. If someone's hurt us really bad and in ways that are unmentionable, you can still love them in Christ with healthy boundaries, safe boundaries there. It doesn't mean you have to let them use you as a doormat or invite them over. Or, no, but you can love them in Christ. And you can pray that they will surrender their life to Christ and that they will love Christ the same way. But you know, as we've read this, we've got one other piece of Scripture here that is important, and I almost went over it. It's Matthew 5, 43 through 48. It says, You have heard that it has been said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. It takes the Spirit of God to measure up, accept Him as your Savior, but it takes the Spirit of God living through you to even measure up to this, to be perfect. And we will fall short, and we will run to the throne of grace because that's what we can do. But see, where I was going earlier is Love is a choice. Do you notice that he didn't leave anybody out? If we go back to Matthew, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And now he says to love your enemy. That means as Christians, being filled with the Spirit of God flowing through us, we are to love everybody that we come in contact with. Doesn't mean we always like them or they're nice to us because our love is a love whether they give love back or not. We love because he first loved us. We don't love expecting love. We love because we are told to love. We, are, we love because we want to love because we want to be right before our Savior and we want to Please, our Heavenly Father. So he leaves no one out. We are to love God. God's created. God's created each and every one of us. We are his created beings. We were created in his image. And we are to bring glory to God. But then sin entered the world. And we got pulled away from that. And by putting our trust in Christ and living for Christ, he brings that relationship back in order. We can be in right standings with our Heavenly Father. And I love what our paper says that we were reading in Titus 3 through 8, that we become heirs. Heir. We get the Father's inheritance. We are sons and daughters of God. I can't think of a better place to be but this love, it's a love for all others. It's an unfailing, unconditional love, but it's an all-consuming love. It should take us to the very being that we are to love one another this way. Not just brothers in Christ or friends, but even our enemies. So how do you love your enemy? You pray for them. And if given the opportunity, you share the love of Christ with them, even to the point of begging. Because see, God loved. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross 
for that same individual, the enemy. You know, I always ask myself in the morning, choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua said it. He had just got done telling Israel, you know, you choose whatever God you want, but as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You know, for me, we have to do that every day. But ultimately, we also have to choose how we love every day. We can love out of our own vessel. It won't get us very far. But if we love the way that Christ has commanded us to love, we can't fall short. We're not perfect. We might not even do it right the first few times, but guess what? He still loves you. And he still cares for you. And there's no greater love than the love that Christ has given us. So, at this point, we'd ask, we'd break up into circles of five or six guys. We would uh, ask you two questions. What stood out to you? How did this impact you? There's the first question. And how can we pray for you? If you do not know Jesus Christ and you want somebody to pray for you with you, message us. You can if you've got some of our phone numbers, call us. We'd love to pray with you. If you feel led to do that, we ask you don't let the don't let the sun finish going down without doing that tonight. We don't know what tomorrow holds. I'm not trying to scare you. But it is the most important decision of your life. Maybe you fell back into your addiction. Maybe you're struggling somehow. Reach out. You know, that's the that's the importance of us when we say keep showing up it changes everything show up to the word of god show up to these meetings yeah we also say that you don't have to show up for the rest of your life because when christ sets you free you're free indeed but there's those of us that can't get enough of it and we show up now to help um, lead and to walk through the word of god with you so it it's it's a big part. Our table discussion is a big part it, for healthy relationships um, with our p individuals, but also you got to get plugged in. Caleb and I both will tell you if if you think you can do it on your own, it don't work. You got to get plugged in. You got to be into get into Bible studies, get into uh, different lessons where you can see the Word of God from a different perspective, but still the truth of the, the Word of God coming out. It helps you in your growth and it helps you to walk right before God. So I challenge you. I know it's hard right now, but, you know, seek one of us out. There's, there's many of us that would love to help you. And if you're a woman, there is women out here that would love to help you as well. So I can't express that enough. After that, that's all I've got. We'd love to pray with you. We trust you're doing well. Um, we love you, and we we just we can't express that enough that uh, we love because He first loved us. Let me pray for you, and we'll call it a night. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you for the love that only comes from you, Father God. It's an unconditional love that flows from the throne of God. Through Christ, through us, to each and every one that we come in contact with. Lord, may we always uh, have a love that is in action, that is in action, that brings you glory and honor, Father, that pleases you. Father, I pray that if there be anybody that's watching this, or here tonight that does not know you, that they will not leave until they surrender their life to you. And Father, for those that might be struggling or have fallen back in their addiction, I pray for them right now, Lord, that you will um, set them back on the right path, Father. Give them victory and then help them to reach out 
and get plugged in to link shields, Father, with those of us that are here and with other believers that can walk alongside of them and help them in this time. Father, may we glorify you in all that we do and say until your son returns to take us home. We thank you and praise you for this day. In Christ's holy and precious name, amen. Have a good night.